Hey y'all, I'm Todd Clifford, preacher for the Burleson Church of Christ in Hamilton, Alabama. Thank you for joining me in this midweek Bible study. It is about 4.45 and I'm trying to get this session in. We're in between a couple of bands of storms right now, so I'm trying to get this done while uh, we're in between uh, bad cells. There's a line of storms coming out of Columbus, Mississippi, headed this way. So I'm going to try to get this done while we can... Uh, be a little bit safe from the weather and keep our eyes out. We do want to keep folks in mind in South Alabama, South Mississippi, uh, folks have been affected by tornadoes. I'm getting some of that word and we want to keep them uh, in our prayers. As all, Also, all the people that are uh, currently experiencing some of these storms and are in the line of these dangerous storms, keep all these folks in our hearts, our minds, our prayers, and that them all will be safe and pray for our, our first responders that uh, we'll be out and about in this uh, very dangerous uh, weather. And a good friend of mine uh, travels uh, by truck and uh, was in Hamilton, Alabama today and uh, having to uh, kind of cut his trip short. And uh, he's going to join us. I think I just saw he's joining us now. So uh, just a, a joy to be with you. And I want us to think about some things uh, this afternoon, this evening, with regard to uh, the matter of uh, dealing with personal sin and, and some hindrances uh, that we can experience in dealing with uh, personal sins and transgressions. I look at, I've got all oh, six or seven that I want to uh, deal with this, this afternoon if time uh, permits and weather permits. And uh, one of the problems that a lot of times people have in dealing uh, with their sins is the matter of, of comparison. In other words, when, when confronted, uh, when brought face to face or confronted with uh, their sin, they want to compare their sin to the sins of others. In other words, you know, I have done, you know, I have done X, okay, but X is not nearly as bad as Y and Z and so and so is, you know, commits Y and so and so commits Z or lots of people commit Y and Z and so, you know, X is not as bad as Y or Z. And so we, we compare what we believe are sins that are less problematic to others that we believe are more problematic. And you know, I think about a couple of passages that, in the, particularly in the New Testament, I think about Luke uh, chapter 18 and beginning in verse 9 with the, the Pharisee and the publican. You know, J Jesus said, you know, two men went up to the temple to pray, one the Pharisee and the other publican. It says, the, prayer, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. He says, Lord, I thank you that I am not like other people are. And he goes on along this list of, of all the things that he is not. And he, and he finishes it off for even as this publican. And so he was comparing himself to others that he thought uh, were, were far worse than himself. And in fact, it, it seems, to be, seems to be obvious that he didn't think he had any uh, sins uh, for which to be uh, penitent or to ask forgiveness for of course then the counterpart his counterpart the publican you know would not so much as lift up his eyes to heaven and smote himself on the breast god be merciful to me a sinner and jesus said you know this is the this is the man this latter man is the one who went down to his house justified as opposed to uh, the first or the former and so the the pharisee compared himself to others and, and in so doing thought that uh, it made him look good. Uh, I think about 2 Corinthians chapter 10 where uh, now not necessarily it's not in the matter of sin uh, specifically but where, where people were comparing themselves by themselves or among themselves or against themselves and says you know Paul says we don't do that it says the others who compare themselves against themselves, they are not wise, and so and and we learned that that the comparison game is a is a bad and dangerous game. Uh, for example, I might I might think that my sin is not as bad as the sin of others, but the truth of the matter is that sin will keep me out of heaven. Sin will damn my soul, no matter how bad I think it is. Or how much better I think that it is than someone else's sin, um, my sin will separate me from God. You know, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. You know, your sins have hidden his face from you and your iniquities, you know, so, so that he will not see or will not hear. 
And so this idea of comparing our, ourselves with others is, is, a, is, is a foolish uh, and very dangerous practice. And so we don't want to we don't want to fall into the comparison trap. Also, you know, there are a number of <laughs> there are a number of other difficulties with the comparison trap because or the comparison problem because we don't know all the facts. It may be that it may be that that our life is is a lot easier than the the life of perhaps some brother or sister in Christ. You know, we, none of us really know what goes on in 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 the in the in the homes and hearts of you know of our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, someone someone may have a, a terrible home life. They may have a, a, an abusive spouse. They could have problem children. Uh, there may be financial difficulties, unknown health difficulties, and 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 we might maybe not compare our sins, but we may compare ourselves to others in that respect and, and get a false sense of of, of our own uh, value to uh, to the Lord, like like the Pharisee did, and it, and just end up making a, a completely false comparison. And so we want to be want to be mindful of the problem of of the comparison game because no matter you know, no matter who in this world I compare myself to, there's really only one person uh, that I need to compare myself to, and that's the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is always, you know, Jesus is always the standard. And so I think if I could save myself a lot of time and a lot of trouble if I'll compare myself to Jesus, then I don't have to worry about what brother or sister so-and-so uh, is doing or what I think they are doing or what I think they should be uh, doing. And so the comparison, the comparison problem is one that that uh, hinders us uh, from dealing with our, our our personal sins. And then, secondly, there is the matter of the the sins of society, as opposed to our personal sins. In other words, and this is again a form of the comparison game that that we can look out into the world and see what other people are are doing, you know, openly, you know, and especially now in our particular society you know I just thought it was bad when I was a kid and and, and what goes on now uh, in public uh, and and is promoted as good and right is is just just unthinkable um, you know somebody said that the Grammys were on earlier this week and and I didn't have any idea so I, I, it's not that I didn't I, I intentionally didn't watch it I mean I wouldn't have watched it but some of the stuff that, that came out of, of that show was just was was hellish and ungodly and that kind of stuff is being being held up as as as, as good and and desirable, and we might look and say, well, look at look at all this sin that's going on in the world, and and you know, what I've done is is so small uh, in comparison to to what others are are doing openly or the or or what the whole world is doing. But again, you know, my sin is my problem. The, the sin of the world is the world's problem, or the sin of others are, is the problem of others. I still have to deal. With, I still have to deal with with my sin, or sometimes I might want to lump my sin in with the world. Say, well, the world's full of sin, and what I've done is is not that bad. And so what I end up doing is, is I end up associating myself with with the world, because uh, corporate guilt or group guilt is not nearly is not felt nearly as strong. Uh, as personal or individual guilt, uh, for example, people will do things in a crowd. You see all kind of craziness going on uh, after teams win World Series or Super Bowls or national championships, or or and and you just see that this this mass of humanity out engaged in various types of debauchery, and we can get caught up. You know, say we people can get caught up in that, and it's in the crowd, and then you know then later on you think. You know, I really shouldn't have done that, but because you know five or ten thousand other people did it, I don't feel the guilt nearly as 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 strongly or as personally. Whereas if I were out kind of on an island somewhere, and we, you know what I you know what I mean by on an island. In other words, if I'm out here and I'm the only one doing it, and I get caught, then the shame of that is felt uh, much more strongly. And so we want to make sure that we don't we don't kind of incorporate our own personal guilt. Uh, into the into the the larger scheme of society, lest we fail to feel uh, the guilt uh, that we should because of our sins. You know, the Bible is, is is true and right. It says all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and verse 23. There is none that does good. There's none that is righteous. There's none that does not sin. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 20. Romans 3 verses 10 and 11. But just because that is true doesn't mean I still don't have to deal with my personal sin. Uh, sin is not justifiable under any circumstance. You know, in Romans 3 and verse 8, Paul said that there were some who slander, slanderously reported that he was teaching, let us do evil that good may come. So, and so Paul said that, that, that was a scandalous report. And so Paul says it's not right to, to sin, even if even if we think good uh, comes out of it. But uh, but sin, it, 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 you know, it's never right to do wrong, and there's never an excuse. You know, everybody's doing it is no excuse, or everybody everybody has sinned, or everybody has done exactly what I have done, uh, is not an excuse for sin. You think about Genesis chapter six, verses one through twelve, and and the. Our introduction to the greatness of the man uh, Noah, and you know what does the world or what does the Bible say about the world of Noah's day? That every thought and intent of man's heart was only do evil continually. The world was filled with wickedness, and yet Noah did not consider that an, as an excuse not to do what God said or to 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 live uh, in accordance with uh, God's word, and so. And so the, the sins of society versus personal sins uh, is also, uh, the sins of society versus personal sin is also a trap that we can fall into that, that hinders us from dealing with our personal sin. And then number three, there's the matter of, or the false idea of sin plus time equals forgiveness. Sin plus time equals forgiveness. A lot of people fall into that trap. In other words, uh, I can, um, if I sin and, and I ignore it long enough, then maybe, you know, people will forget it. And if people will forget it, then I can just kind of slide my way back into uh, my former state or status in the local church. And that's a false idea. When, you know, sin still must be dealt with. Um, that's one thing that we encourage, like, for example, when, when people... You know, when people have been away from the Lord for a long time and, and they want to do right and they want to come back and, and they want to be a part of a local church and, and, and worship you know worship God with, with the people of God and, and and they start coming for a while. You know, and it, I was saying is, you know, it, sometimes when they first come back, they sit in the back and as they as they grow more comfortable, they move closer and closer to the front. And what is meant by that is they begin to incorporate themselves uh, into uh, the life of the local church, and yet there's there's been no statement of repentance. There's been no uh, there's been no formal desire expressed uh, to to express repentance, remorse uh, for that period of unfaithfulness, uh, or and we might say there's been no formal expression of a desire to be identified. Uh, with that local church and and you know the bible teaches that, that christians are to be identified with local churches saul practiced it uh, in acts chapter 9. you know he came to jerusalem and and he I, he sought to be identified with the brethren at jerusalem and so we want to make sure that that um, uh, that we don't fall into the sin plus time equals forgiveness by the way people will forget uh, some people will not necessarily forget, but they'll fall into the same trap. Well, it was just so long ago, and look what he's doing now. You know, look at look at the change, and and that's great. There's there's no question about that. But you know, there's still there is still power in there is still power in the the confession of the statement I have sinned. You know, I have sinned. That's statements found about a half a dozen times in our Bibles and, and about half the time half the time the person didn't mean it and the other half they did and you can see the result uh, you can see the result of, of, of both of those both sides of that coin but it's still something that needs to be handled you know sin plus time uh, does not equal forgiveness um, our restoration you know the Bible says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, you know, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness. Galatians 6, verses 1 and 2. 
you know, if, if, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, uh, let him know that he who converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sins. And so we find uh, the power. We find the power of 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 rebuke, of of exhortation, of confession and restoration. And so we want to make sure that we deal with our sins, uh, even though they may have been long, uh, long ago in our past, or maybe long in our past. But we want to we want to deal with those things forthrightly and, and make sure that these things are dealt with so that we can move forward in a proper relationship uh, with the Lord and with his church. Uh, then um, there's number four, number four, and that is uh, what's called the cover up. The cover up. In other words, I've commit. I, the cover up says I've committed a sin, but nobody knows about it. And so, as long as nobody knows about it, I don't have to deal with it. Of course, David uh, was the the great example of the cover up in Second uh, Samuel 11 and 12 when he committed that sin with Bathsheba, and that sin bore fruit. And in an attempt, in an attempt to to hide the fruit of his sin you know he brought in Uriah and, and Uriah wouldn't he wouldn't cooperate and then David added sin to sin by not only having Uriah killed but he he, he sent his he sent his own death certificate in his in, in the man's own hand so, you know sent orders with him to, to go back and 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 Uriah is such a faithful uh, faithful servant of David and David had him killed in an attempt to cover up and um uh, and then after Uriah was dead, Bathsheba came into David's house. And, and the Bible says, but the thing that David did displeased the Lord. In other words, Nathan didn't know about it. Nobody else in the, nobody else, perhaps in the palace knew about it, but God knew about it. And, and that's the main that's the main one. And, you know, the, the, the sins we commit in the dark are, are, are just might as well have been committed at noontime so far as God is concerned. You know, I used to have a little uh, button, probably still do, in my in my old office. It says God can see in the dark, and it, you know that's a reminder. And even Jesus said, you know, those that sin sin in the dark, uh, lest uh, lest the light expose their evil deeds. And so, but you know, covering up our sins is no way uh, to deal uh, with our sins. In Psalm 90 verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, "You have set our sins before you, our secret iniquities, in the light of your countenance." Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14, God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing. And David spoke to the, the om, omnipresence and the omniscience of God in Psalm 139. David said, no matter where I go, you're there. Light and dark doesn't make any difference in your eyes. And so there's no, there's no sense of trying to cover up our sins. Uh, we may hide our sins from uh, you know, we may hide our sins fr from the world, and we may hide our sins from the church, but we'll never hide our sins from God, and and we need not fool ourselves into thinking that because we've hidden our sins from men, that we will not give an account of those sins before God. Then uh, number five, I want us to think about the matter of of shifting morality. Uh, in other words, or, or uh, I got it, uh, buff or buffet morality. In other words, picking picking and choosing uh, the matters of morality. And I just put it: I cannot pick and choose which virtues I have uh, that cancel out my vices. In other words, okay, I realize I have this this vice, and, and I just use the term vice in in a general sense, not like it's a, a crime like in, in our justice system. You know, I have this vice and this vice and this vice. Here are three vices, but but I but I also have I have four virtues, and so my, I have four virtues. So I have three virtues to to cancel out my three vices, and therefore and then, therefore I still have virtues left over. Therefore I'm a virtuous person, and so therefore I can I can pick and choose now what I have that's good that that cancels out what I what I know uh, is wrong. But once again, you know, the life of Christ is always the standard. And the word of God is always the standard, and and it may be the case that I may have vices that I don't know about, and that's not the whole point anyway. You know, it's not a matter of trying to do good in order that I can, you know, okay, if I can do just enough good, I can tip the scales in my favor for all the wrong that I've done, and 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 you know, sometimes people 
I don't look at it that way. I, I, I want to do good and, and I want to do right for a number of reasons. Now, one of the reasons I try to do right is because I remember all the wrong that I've done. I mean, I don't do right in an attempt to outweigh the wrong, but I, I do allow the wrong that I've done to, to provide an impetus for me, a, a force, a compulsion to do right. And, and even, you know, even Paul, you know, spoke of, of his past deeds. Uh, as and I think as a as a reminder of what he had done and it and it compelled him to do right but he wasn't trying he wasn't trying to even the score or he wasn't trying to he wasn't trying to get ahead you know by by tipping this the scales of good deeds in favor over his evil deeds because the only the only answer for evil deeds is the blood of Jesus Christ in other words I don't get to do you know I don't have a hundred thousand bad deeds that I have to make up with a hundred and one thousand good deeds. You know, the only thing that takes care of my iniquities is the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Christ cleanses all sin. First John 1 and verse 9, it, it provides the remission. You know, when we obey the gospel and we are immersed in water to receive the remission of our sins, all of our sins are washed away. So, so there, is no, there is no balancing act to maintain. Because once, you know, once the blood of Christ is applied to my soul, uh, there are no sins against my record. And so if you think about it, the, the life of the Christian, any Christian, if, uh, if, you, if you looked at it in, in that direct, in, in, in that, from that direction or, or from that perspective, you know, the life of every single Christian, if you were weighing it out, the, the, the good deeds would, would far outweigh the evil deeds. Because God wiped out all the evil ones when you obeyed the gospel. And, and, and so then the rest of your life would, would be a comparison of, 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 really no comparison at all shouldn't be, of, of good versus evil. But, but even then, even if you could, even if you could, um, even if you could live your life above sin from the time you obeyed the gospel, in other words, even if God wiped your slate clean, which He does when you're when you're when you're immersed into Christ for the remission of sins, the blood of Christ cleanses you from all sin. If you could live, or if I could live, without ever sinning again, from that time forward, it still wouldn't mean I deserve to go to heaven. And, and we don't want it, we never we never want to think in those terms that uh, that even if I could live without having to need forgiveness, you know, what if I could live as long as Methuselah? 969 years and I could live 900 or even let's say a thousand years and I could live a thousand years with the and have the ability and to accomplish a thousand years of living and never commit a single sin I still don't deserve to go to heaven you know the only thing the only argument that I could make is I don't deserve to go to hell you know, if I don't sin, if I never sinned in a thousand years, I don't deserve to go to heaven. All I can say is I don't deserve to go to hell. The best I could hope for is to is to just be like some be like some deer hit on the highway, just just be dead and be done. And uh, and so that's you know we can fall into the the trap of uh, of of virtues over vices, and that's not again that's a, that's a very dangerous place to be. Uh, it, in many ways, it nullifies it nullifies the grace of God. Then uh, number six is uh, the it's not my fault. You know, it's not my fault. And and increasingly in our society, uh, we continue to see people play the blame game. You know, Flip Wilson and I, I'm dating myself now because you know uh, you know Flip Wilson was a comedian from my childhood, and uh, and he had a he had a character. I believe his name Josephine, and uh, that character was always famous for saying, "The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it." And you know, and, and in our society, you know, nobody ever wants to accept responsibility for their wrongdoings. It's always somebody else's fault. Yeah, I did wrong, but but so and so made me do it, or so and so did this, and and I didn't have any choice but but to do what I did. And yet, First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen says. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful and will with the temptation provide a way of escape that you may be able to, to bear it. And so the reason sin is as awful as it is is because we always have a choice. And, and we always have the choice to do what God says or we ha or we, and we have the choice not to do 
what God says. And when, when we sin, we choose not to do what God says. And so that's why, why sin is, is, is as, as horrible as it is. You know, God made us as free moral agents. We have the ability to choose. Uh, we are not depraved from birth. We don't inherit some type of. Uh, we do not inherit an inclination to sin uh, from Adam and Eve uh, through some hereditary depravity. Uh, every person has free moral agency. You, if you think you know, people say, "Well, we sin because we're inclined to sin from birth." Well, because we inherited we inherit a, a fallen nature from Adam. Well, then what was Adam's excuse? You know, what was Adam's excuse? Adam was made in the image of God. You know, Adam Adam didn't have any anybody in his ancestry to, to turn around and and uh, and blame. Although he did try to blame God, he said, "The woman you the woman you gave to me, God, she gave me and and I ate." And so, but you know, God didn't accept the blame game with Adam when he blamed Eve, and he didn't accept the blame game when Eve tried to blame the serpent. And the, the blame game is, is, is not to be played in dealing with personal sins. Again, I have sinned. Uh, the, 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 in the truest meaning and, and, and sense and uh, intention of that statement, that's the way, that is the way that we deal with sin, is we deal with it head on and we don't try to blame others for our sins and our shortcomings. Then, then lastly is, is the one that... Um, Sometimes people will, will, will try to use, it, and I call it perfectly perfect perfection. In other words, well, everybody sins, nobody can be perfect, so therefore, because I can't be perfect, that justifies my sin. And by the way, the Bible does tell us we're not going to be perfect. You know, we're, going, we're going to sin. You know, if, if a man says, I have no sin, he's a liar. You know, if somebody says he hasn't sinned, he makes God a liar. And so, but just because, just because... And let me back up just a little bit. Perfection, perfection is technically possible. I mean, Jesus did it, and he didn't do it miraculously because uh, because God stacked everything in his favor. You know, you know, uh, Satan accused God of, of building a hedge around Job so that Job would be, Job would do right, uh, and 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 so. But you know, the, God didn't stack everything in Jesus's favor that allowed him to live perfectly. Uh, when I say perfectly, I mean without sin. So we know sinless perfection is possible. You know, Jesus never sinned, even in his in the earliest days of his youth or his teenage years. And so it is possible, uh, but we do know that it, it's not going to happen if we live long enough. You know, if we live long enough, it, it, we're going to fall in uh, to sin. And so, so with that being the case. I'm not allowed to use that as an excuse for my sin. In other words, well, nobody's perfect. The Bible says I'm going to sin, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm just living out what the Bible says is going to happen to me anyway. No, I'm going to have to, again, deal headlong uh, with our sins. And 1 John 2, and beginning in verse 1, um, says that, uh, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ uh, you know the, the righteous. He's our advocate uh, uh, before the Father. But that phrase, that you sin not. Now, this is one of those sections where our English Bibles don't reveal the intensity of of a phrase um, like it should. For example, in in First John two one and two, it says, "I write these things that you sin not." Well, in the very next chapter, in chapter three, John says that those who are, are born of God do not sin, as if we never would sin after we become Christians. And, and the English, our, our English language doesn't reveal to us uh, what the original is saying. In 1 John 3, I'm going to the second one first. In 1 John 3, those that are born of God do not sin. That word means sin. The, the tense of that word sin means we don't sin and keep on sinning in the same sin. In other words, we, we do not continue in sin. Our lives are not marked by sin you know, as, as, as a continuous act. But back in chapter 2, he says, I write these things that you sin not. In that particular case, he's exhorting them to live in such a way as to not commit even a single sin. 
and, and in other words, it's a noteworthy it, it, or it's a worthy goal for the child of God uh, to wake up every day with the intent and the purpose to not commit a single sin. That's what John says in 1 John 2. Live your life in such a way as to not commit even a single sin. But if any man does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, uh, who gave himself for our sins, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And so when that when that point in time, we might say a punctiliar, uh, that, that right there, when that sin happens, that one sin happens, you, you're trying to avoid it, but there it is, it, 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 it finds itself, it finds its way into your life. Now you have an advocate with the Father. When, when you sin, right then you have that advocate. As opposed to in 1 John 3, when the Christian lives in sin, refuses to deal with personal sin, and, and continues in it, there's no, there's, a, no, there's no advocacy there uh, for that person with regard uh, to the Lord. And so we want to understand very clearly what the two texts are teaching. 1 John 2 says, again, we know we can't be perfect, but 1 John 2 says we should strive for sinless perfection. And when we fail, we have Christ as our advocate. 1 John 3 says those of us that have obeyed the gospel and have been born again, continuing in sin is not a part of who we are. It's no longer associated, uh, should no longer be associated with those who have named the name of Christ and uh, taken the name of Christian and, and going forward. And so there's there's a difference there in, in, in the words that, are, that our English Bibles don't, uh, don't render for us or, or don't really um, enlighten us as, as to the intensity of both sides. But just because I can't be perfect does, or sinless doesn't mean I shouldn't, I shouldn't try. And when I do fall, I have Christ as my advocate. If I, refuse, if I refuse to deal with my sin, then I lose the advocacy of Jesus. Then I'm in my sin. And even Christians can so sin, uh, or can sin so as to be lost. And so just a number of, of problems. We'll just, just by, by way of reminder, uh, the comparison game. And you know, my sin is not as bad as so-and-so's. That's not how we should deal with personal sin. Uh, the, incorporating my sins uh, or trying to hide them within the sins of society is not how I deal with my personal sin. Uh, time, uh, you know, sin plus time does not equal forgiveness. So, in other words, uh, just allowing the passage of time is no is no answer. Or deal, or is no way to deal with my personal sins. Covering up my sins obviously is no way to deal with my personal sins. Uh, shifting morality or, or buffet-style uh, morality is no way to deal with my sins. Blaming others is no way to deal with my sins. And and the 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 impossibility of sinlessness uh, is again no excuse to deal or fail to deal with my personal sins. So hope these things have been helpful to you. Um, I, I love these types. I love these types of studies. I think they're very practical. Uh, they're always helpful to me, and I hope that this one has been helpful to you as well. I think we had a few interruptions in the stream, and so um, I'll upload this uh, to my YouTube channel. I may try to edit it and um, and reload it to my Facebook page. Uh, but in any event, whatever we do have uh, will be archived here in just a moment. And so, thank you for joining us in this this period of Bible study. Uh, Lord willing, um, uh, we'll be back next. Well, no, we won't be back. I'll, I'll try to get something back online uh, sometime next Wednesday afternoon uh, in a Facebook live session. And so uh, hope that you'll join us then. And, uh, of course, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, the Burleson Church will meet. And then at 530, we'll meet. And uh, hope that you will, if you are able, you can be with us uh, at that time. Thank you again for being with us. God bless you. Hope you have a great evening. Stay safe and pray for those in the paths of the storms.